This video is part two of this tank installation. So if you want to know how I built the base and hooked up the gutters, go back to part one. Uh, I'll put a link down below. In part two, we're going to hook up the pump so we can actually use this water. And I'm going to fit the overflow in case we ever fill it too much. For the pump, I went with the relatively inexpensive Bianco pumps Inox 45. It's an imported pump here in Australia. There are a number of Australian pump manufacturers and with most products, my preference is to always go Australian made. But speaking to the gentleman at the irrigation store, he suggested this pump over some of the others that were much more expensive. And I've also had some really bad experiences with one of those Australian pump manufacturers on our house pump. And look, I'm sure you do with most things get what you pay for so i'm sure the australian made pumps are better uh, but for the limited use this pump's going to get you know it's only going to be used for irrigation emptying this extra tank it's not going to be on the house where it gets turned on and off all the time and so i think for those purposes this pump should be fine and if i have to replace it one day well i have to replace it to fit the pump to the tank i originally bought this little um tank to pump installation kit i was well this wasn't originally. Originally, I was going to do it out of hard PVC pipe, but just getting some of the angles, I figured it'd be nice to have a flexible um, pipe between the tank and the pump. Also, if the pump vibrates a bit, you're not sending all those vibrations into the tank. So I got this kit, pretty cheap, from Bunnings, which is like our version of Home Depot over here in Australia. Um, <laughs> and I should have realized it's on the damn box, but it's see-through. And so I opened it up, realized it was clear, which I should have known, I just didn't, um, which is gonna be an algae issue where my tank is because it's gonna be open. It's gonna be open to light and so algae will grow on the inside of the pipe. This cheap option is probably pretty good if it's all covered, but it's just not suitable for me. And so I had to go the more expensive option of going and getting one of these ribbed pipes and some fittings. Now this ribbed pipe, you need the ribbed pipe because the pump's going to create some suction from the tank. And if you just have poly pipe, there's the, well, there is the ability for it to crush down on itself when the pump sucks. Let's avoid that issue by having the right pipe. It is expensive though, so be warned. Um, I got this from my local landscape place that sells all pumps and fittings and things like that as well. So yeah, check that if you can't find it. Um, I'm sure you could get it from any irrigation place though. So yep, I've got that instead of this. I'll take this one back to Bunnings. They're pretty good about that. So it's my fault, but yeah, that's why I'm not gonna use that. That's why I've chosen instead to use this pipe. The pump's gonna sit on an angle in this corner underneath this cover. This is an actual tank pump cover. You could build one out of timber or whatever. Um, I just wanted the quick option, but you do need a cover for the pump. They are waterproof to a degree, but you wouldn't want it out in the weather all the time. Uh, so it's going to go on an angle here so i've got to hook my pipe up to go around and into the pump and then i'll probably put a tap just here so i can use the water out of the pump i am going to make a solid base to sit the pump on i don't want to um, put anything into the concrete here because you know things change pumps wear out you need a new pump and it doesn't fit the old position so i'm actually going to bolt it to a big block of wood that i'm going to sit here under the cover and that'll be a nice stable platform for the pump so I had a big, uh, so I had a plank of hardwood that I thought would make a nice base for the pump. This would have been absolutely perfect. More on this later though, this didn't end up being the final solution. Uh, but this is how I started and, and this might be a good path to go down for you. So yeah, I just cut a big, uh, a plank of the hardwood, squared it up and then just screwed it in just with roofing screws. Um, the, the holes that attach it do have thread in them, so you can put bolts up through the bottom, but I figured roofing screws with the washers, the rubber washers would be a good option just to hold it down. This is a barrel union, and this is how I'm gonna connect the pump to that flexible hose you saw earlier. Now, the pump needs a minimum of 150 mil out the front of the inlet. It just needs that straight pipe there to avoid restrictions as the water goes into the pump. And so this is going to add as that straight 150 mils out the front of the pump. 
um, that section, which way is it? That section goes into the pump. So this is gonna be that 150 mils, but this is a barrel union. Now in the US, I think you just call them unions. Um, some mistakenly call them couplers, they're not couplers, but basically there's a collar that screws down on a thread. And if you undo the collar, you can actually take the two pieces apart without having to remove anything. And you can see they're just pushed up against each other. Now one of the halves has a O-ring in it. And so they actually seal when they're pulled together and, and tightened up with the collar. But obviously undoing that, you can just remove the pump without having to unscrew any th or redo any thread tape or break any of your solid, um, solid couplers. They are actually called couplers. Um, or your solid out el glued elbows. You don't have to undo any of that. You can just pull it apart nice and easy. So barrel union or, or union, depending where you are, great way to attach things like pumps that you're gonna need to work on. Um, I know some people with sprinkler systems on their lawns and they have to work on valves and things like that. They'll use these same sorts of, of unions uh, for those situations so they can easily undo them and work on the components. So in connecting the pump, I just put a bit of PTFE or um, thread tape on the threads and screwed them into the respective places. So the barrel end I'm putting closer to the pump so it's easy to remove if I need to. It also, remember, needs that 150 mil out the front. In setting up your pipe work, you want to avoid any air pockets. So you don't want your line going up and down and up and down. You want a nice smooth flow, either all uphill or all downhill to your pump. Uh, I kept this one as neat as I could, did up all the feedings nice and tight. I did have to change the position of the pump a little bit just because it was too tight or angle and I could have put a 90 degree bend out of the um, gate that's on the tank, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted a nice even flow to the pump, so I had to move its position. You're likely going to have to cut holes in your tank cover and it's going to depend on your individual setup. You're likely going to have to cut holes in your tank cover and it's going to depend on your setup. For mine, I just had to cut a slot in one end which would serve as both the inlet from the tank and the outlet that I'm going to use later for my tap. Alright, so I went away for a lunch for a bit and I'm back out to sort it out. I've put another barrel union on the top which means where it goes out and to a tap I can easily disconnect that as well. So two barrel unions in and out of the pump so it's easy to remove you can see the pump just plugs in on the wall back wall of the shed there um, and so yeah now that's a working pump if i had water in it i could turn it on and water would come rushing out of there obviously that's a pressure regulator uh, or a pump controller and so i need to have a tap or some way to turn it off or it would just pump out all the water in the tank but i have it a snag so my cover fits beautifully over it except it sits about 10 mil off the concrete here where it exits out the top of the pump is too high and I don't really have an easy way of fixing this. That's as tight as I could make it. It's not too far forward. It's actually this bend here it just puts it too high. Um, even without the barrel union, if that was straight pipe, it's still gonna be touching the cover, which I don't want. If it vibrates at all, it'll make noise and whatnot. So the only thing I can think is my nice bit of hardwood I'd used as a base. I'm gonna have to find something thinner. Either that or raise the cover up, which I'd rather not do. So lesser of two evils, I think, is to replace this nice hardwood base. Um, the most stable material I have that's thin enough is probably some, I've got some marine ply in there that I could use. So I will use that. It won't last forever, but it's the lesser of two evils. I'd rather have the cover that comes all the way to the ground and keeps the water mostly out uh, than have a nice heavy base although i would have loved to have had this as the base so yeah damn not a big deal and a pretty easy fix i did have to use smaller screws obviously in the thinner plywood then i was on to making the down pipe or the overflow pipe for the tank so this is actually called a mozzie stopper and it just goes, I'm going to use it 
directly as the water leaves the tank but it's just a screen to stop any mosquitoes getting into the water tank and laying their eggs and so ending up with mosquito larvae in your tank and adding to the mosquito problem which is never a good thing uh, it's really simple and the important part about this design is you can actually pop this down move the screen sideways so you can clean the screen off because your overflow will get clogged up over time so it's important that you can do this to clean it and then you just click it back in and yeah really good way to keep mosquitoes out the other cool thing about this is it'll sit on top of the tank and it's actually a friction fit so it's fittings in the top of the tank and it goes sits down inside its fitting you don't need to pvc cement them together it's friction fit and the same thing in the top see how there's that second lip it holds the fitting that goes in the top really tightly and what that means is I can remove my overflow easily at any time. I can just take this pipe out of the, the mozzie stopper. And it also means if I ever break this mozzie stopper, I can easily replace it. So yeah, great little design. That's what I'll be using. This is another type of mozzie stopper. And I'm going to use one of these as well, just to stop anything getting up inside the pipe. Nothing too difficult about putting the pipes together. Uh, just a lot of up and down the ladder marking and lining things up and then dry fitting everything and marking the angles and just checking it all looks right before I took it down and glued it all together. Definitely measure twice and cut once. I did waste a few bends with a mistake I made. I followed up with a few coats of the woodland grey paint that matches the colour of the tank. I did no special prep other than a quick wipe down which is not the way to do it. Uh, but I've got this paint on hand. I can always give it a touch up when required. Back in position and I was pretty happy with how it looked. Where this empties, once I level the soil back out, is actually into a, a drainage channel of sorts that runs the water away from the house. Uh, so this will be a good spot for this overflow. I may put some gravel underneath the outlet eventually just to prevent any erosion. In part three of this series, I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook up the tap uh, so I can use the water around the garden. So that'll involve running pipe work underground from the pump to the tap. That will be the final video in this series. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.